Hello, thank you for watching. In this very short video, I want to say a few words about a very important tool in IP uh, law, which is the sys and desist letter. Uh, we use this tool a lot for our clients, offensively and defensively. Offensively, you can use a sys and desist letter to enforce your IP rights, being those being uh, patent rights, uh, trademark rights, copyright rights, uh, trade secret rights, and so on. You can use that letter offensively to ask the perceived infringer to stop his or her activities and to maybe sometimes pay you uh, 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 damages or royalties for the infringement that already occurred or, or some other demands that you may state in, in that letter. Uh, before you send the cease and desist letter, obviously you need to make a case in the letter itself as to why you believe the infringer is engaging in infringing activities and why they should stop their activities and, and, and or uh, pay you damages or entering a license agreement or whatever the demand may be. And sometimes you may be the one that, who receives the cease and desist letter. What we see oftentimes is that the cease and desist letters can be pushed back against because either the facts are not there or the law is not there to support the claims of the sender of that cease and desist letter. Um, and if that's the case, you know, a strong response to the cease and desist letter can resolve the dispute without you uh, need, uh, needing to, to pay any, any damages or any fees or uh, without uh, the need to, to resolve the dispute in, in, in court, for example. The worst case scenario is that all the allegations in that letter are correct and the law uh, as applies to those respective facts uh, leads one to a clear conclusion of infringement and uh, the other side uh, will uh, be quick to, to rush to the courthouse and file a lawsuit against you. That will be the worst case scenario. However, that rarely happens, right? The other side wants to uh, uh, mitigate legal expenses, right, to, to minimize them and will rarely ru uh, rush to the, to the courthouse. Uh, they are probably seeking for some settlement, for some licensing fees, for some royalties. Uh, so in the worst case scenario, if you really infringe, a settlement can be negotiated and, you know, uh, resolved. That dispute can be resolved via a settlement, a licensing agreement or, or some other type of uh, agreement um, can, can resolve the dispute. But oftentimes what we see is that the letter itself can be deconstructed, can be uh, pushed back against because the facts and the law is not there uh, to support those allegations. And a, a, a firm and, and, and um, well-developed response to that letter can convince the other side to simply walk away. We, we saw the, that oftentimes happening where after a response and back, the other side pretty much folded and walk away, or maybe it insisted a few times, but we firmly pushed back against that, and, and in the end, they, they walked away. I hope this few uh, words about what the CIS and the CIS letters are and how they can help you in, a, in an offensive way in a, in a protective way to protect your IP, um, but also how you can respond to a cease and desist letter in an effective way. A strong response can resolve the dispute, um, or if an infringement exists, a settlement or a licensing agreement can resolve the dispute without further escalation and without uh, litigation and, and uh, going to court. I hope this helps. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.